Ladies and gentlemen, this is Classy Max Sterling, and you're listening to the Three Count Podcast. I'm in fashion, row with cold passion. Welcome, everybody, to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast presents Now We're Touring, and I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you up this mountain called wrestling. That's right. And by now, everybody should be saying it with me. I am your Sherpa. Actually, you guys should probably be saying you are my Sherpa. But anyway, like every good Sherpa, you got to have someone who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently than you can. That's why it's never about me. It's about who's entering the ring. And today, you see our person from IWA Vintage Pro Wrestling. They've been at MFPW, Synergy, PTP, MPX, and TCW. He is the classiest man who's ever graced us with his presence on this podcast. He is the classy Max Sterling. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Hey, I appreciate this, man. I definitely, uh, I've been watching your character and you from afar and getting across paths with you at IWA. I was like, this is a guy I want to interview. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my mark out moment for today. <laughs> but yes, I appreciate you. And thank you for coming on our show, man. Yeah, absolutely. So for those who don't know who you are, who is Classy Max Sterling? Uh, so uh, Classy Max Sterling started off as a, a guy who just um, just loves uh, suits. Um, that's I think growing up, um, I always saw guys in business suits as like, this is someone important. Like you see them walk in the street, you see people just dressed in regular clothes. And I saw, I would see people in suits and I'm like, they're going somewhere. Like they have some, something important to go do. And so when I was getting into wrestling, um, I had a, a different character originally, but when I was starting to try and create something that I can connect with, I was like, you know, I really love suits. Um, I've been to like a bunch of weddings and I, I really like dressing up in like a suit for weddings. And uh, so I just, wanted to make that uh part of the character um i do like to try and uh, uh carry myself a certain way in terms of um manners um so i kind of just took that i mean it's it's not too complicated uh but just try to be you know as classy as possible always classy never trashy um <laughs> But uh, yeah, um, and now we're 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 kind of going towards an evolution. So we'll see what happens to to Max Sterling in in the next year. Because I feel like there's a I feel like there's an evolution coming. No, I like it. What what I like about like the character is is you're right. Like every person that's like of importance, always in a suit, always seeming like they got to go somewhere. Always like like if you're watch, they look at their watch like all the time like they're having a conversation with you they're just kind of like uh i got i got i got places yeah. to go. listen sir i appreciate the conversation but i have things i gotta do and i gotta run salutations and they just take off <laughs> 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 and i mean even if you look at through like wrestling right like irs or mm -hmm. ted dibiase virgil for a little while right mm -hmm. and you see all these dudes who are always dressed up look at miz like miz when he's oh, yeah. like dressed up you're like a good looking dude right there <laughs> yeah 100 but how did you get into the sport um so i remember watching wrestling uh as like a little kid like five or six years old and, and it's only because my mom was dating a guy that liked wrestling so when we would go over to his house like i would see wrestling but my mom was never a wrestling fan. So when they stopped dating and then when we moved, I had I had a complete disconnect from wrestling. And the only connection I had was when there was uh, a pro wrestler uh, in a movie. So like Hulk Hogan's movies. Um, and then I think I was uh, 13. We'd settled down in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I remember just staying up one night, flipping through the channels, and I came across WCW. And then I was just like, oh, hey, I I remember this. Wrestling. Okay. Uh, 
And then, you know, found WWE, uh, WWE. And so I was like, okay, I got two channels to watch. Like, this is great. But I just never thought, uh, living in Oklahoma at the time, uh, and it wasn't very good at the internet. So I just didn't think wrestling was something that I could do. I didn't never, and it was never, an, I never saw it as an option. Like, you know, you think about stuff that you want to do, but you never really know how to go about it, you know? And wrestling was never something that I was like, yes, I'm going to be a wrestler. I know how to do this. Um, I remember going to going out to eat and there was a when my mom pulled into a parking lot, the car right in front of us had um, one of those decals on their uh, the back, like an advertisement. And it was for a local promotion in um, in Tulsa called um, Oklahoma Championship Wrestling. I think it became Tornado Pro. But I was just like, there's wrestling. I remember going home and like immediately typing it in, uh, <laughs> typing in the website. And I was just like, oh, so like there's wrestling here. Like this is an option because I don't know, like as, as a little kid, it's very hard to see yourself and just saying to yourself, yes, I will move to this place because that's where wrestling is or or that's where I want to pursue. Like, at least for me, I never, I never, it never was like as clear cut as that. Now it's like, yeah, I can move wherever and just do whatever if I need to. But back then I just didn't see it as an option. Um, so I started looking into it. I started going to that promotion and then I ended up moving to Dallas and I was focused on, um, getting settled there with the job that I had. And then it dawned on me. I was like, this is Dallas, Texas. There's, there's wrestling history here. There's gotta be something here. So I just started like mad Googling all the stuff that I could find. And, uh, I ended up finding a place to train at. Um, I started training. Um, I think he calls it the dojo now, but it used to be, uh, XCW. His name's Knight Davis. And uh, that's where I got my start. And it's only just because I just, it, it, it was like, oh, this is Dallas. There's got to be something here. Like if it wasn't for me just realizing where I was living and the fact that there should be something somewhere if I look hard enough, I don't know if I ever would have gotten to wrestling, honestly. No, it's interesting because like when you think about like history and like in pro wrestling, like Texas obviously is like one of the first places like a lot of people think of because it's like, yeah, it's so big. You have everything that goes there. And WWE and AEW are constantly, like, traveling into Texas. And you see – and even WCW back in the day, man. Like, it was nothing to hear about, oh, hey, tonight in Houston, Texas, WCW Thunder is in, blah, 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 blah. Like, here we are. And so I remember, like, constantly remember, like, checking out everybody, like, always being there and, and just seeing, like, each of the promotions. And sometimes you would see, like, crazy things like ECW just, like, show up you know, in Dallas. So yeah, yeah you, absolutely. Like, and there's Texas yeah. has so many good wrestlers. It's, but it's such a large state. I mean, you can drive for hours and still be in Texas. So it's really hard being a wrestler in Texas, unless you're really, really willing to like hit the road and make those trips just to get outside of Texas. Yeah. Um, just to like, I know there's a couple of promotions in like Arkansas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and that's just the neighboring states because you got to go so far. But there's there's a lot of great wrestlers uh, who have a history of wrestling in Texas. There's a lot of great wrestlers there now that uh, you know I'm hoping people um, learn about. I mean, there's so many people now that everybody's starting to learn about. You know, well they've known about them for a while now, but you know, guys like uh, Keith Lee's wrestled in Texas a lot. Ricky Starks. Sammy Guevara. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it, I, that's one of the reasons why I moved to the East Coast was just because Texas seemed so isolated from like the rest of the wrestling world. And it was just like, man, I gotta, I can't, I can't hit the road like that far for like to get out of Texas. So I was like, I have to just move if I really want to try and have an opportunity. You know, it's, it's crazy, though, because when you look at it, like you were like at Texas, like we've had all sorts of people on the show from Texas, whether it was in El Paso or you've had people in Lubbock, or mm. you've had people down in, in Texas, in Dallas, you know, guys like Fuego del Sol. We've had. Oh, yeah. Show. We've had uh, Bryson, Bryson Scott. We've had, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. 
Jastin Taylor, you know, the living proof himself. Yeah. We had, we had Will all day. And that was that's something to say, though, because like, I remember watching like AEW Dark, right? And here's one thing that I think a lot of people should know and probably our hardcore fans know that if you're in if you're over in Texas, no matter what promotion comes in, if you're the local boy, you are cheered. And there's no bigger point than when uh, Will all day was there. And he was just, it was an AEW dark match. It was like right at the beginning of the night. And like the crowd just going all, all day, all day. Yeah. And you heard it. And like Will was like, okay. And there's like, I, I forget, I think he was, I guess like Hangman or somebody. Like it was a big name. And the crowd was just turned for him. And he was just like, yep, this is Texas. <laughs> yeah, Texas fans can be great, man. And then, you know, you have those big crowds. Like all it takes is like a small portion to turn a whole arena into chanting something. Cause they're like, oh, that's a thing we can do. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. You know, so. so you've been there for a while we've seen uh like you said you've gone from from oklahoma to texas over here on the east coast but i'm sure you have one of these what's your worst bump uh worst bump um man. so many that i thought would be bad that just ended up not being as bad as i thought but uh, what was the move? Oh, um, it was only scary because I had um, I didn't realize it at the time, but I had I had torn my shoulder last year. I had torn my shoulder in a match, and I knew my shoulder hurt, but I didn't know it was torn. I just knew it hurt really bad, so I was I was trying to protect it because we still had a lot of match to go, and I didn't know how bad it was. Like it wasn't horrible. I was just like, oh, this feels weird. And um, it was a uh, it was a Michinoku driver, but I just uh, I wasn't expecting it because uh, I was trying to protect myself. So I had to like I want I, I like made the bump lean more. I tried to lean more to my other side, the other shoulder that I knew wasn't hurting. So more force ended up on like one side. So that really hurt. Uh, that's just because I was trying to protect myself, but um so not like the worst bump in terms of just like oh wow i didn't think it would hurt that much but just worse because i was like man i gotta make sure i don't land on my other shoulder because i don't know what's going on no that makes sense that makes sense because like you know that's naturally what you want to do anyways protect yourself that's yeah. what you're supposed to do in wrestling <laughs> like because you never know what's gonna happen mm -hmm. uh so you get done with the show you kind of like done for the night just kind of just need to know what's that post match snack, post match meal that you gotta go get. Oh man, I really don't have one, honestly. Um, when I'm uh, when I'm like locked in on my meal plan, very boring meal plan. Uh, I, I kind of just stick with it. Um, I have a I have a trainer that I work with, and uh, he's. Uh, he's pretty strict. Uh, he's mostly, he mostly works with like uh, fitness and like bodybuilder types. So he's like used to these people being very regimented. And I'm always like, man, I'm not trying to step on stage. You don't have to be mean to me. <laughs> uh, not that he's mean to me, but uh, he's just like, look, you know, let's, we have our goal. Let's lock in and make sure we like get to this goal. Um, but I mean, if we're just talking, Hey, I know I have a, I know I have a free meal that my trainer said, Hey, go have something and enjoy it. Uh, I love a good breakfast, man. Any time of the day, if I can get, if I can get a good omelet and some pancakes, just depends on what type, but like, if I can get an omelet and some pancakes, it doesn't matter what time of day. Uh, I can always enjoy that, man. Yes. A good, a good, uh, you know what? Like now you say that, uh, I kind of want to hit up a Denny's now <laughs> and go get me like just, <sighs> A good like eggs over my hammies, like yeah, that's on point. Like I feel where you're coming from. Like I need one of those now. And I feel like yeah. Denny's also had like the uh like the all meat uh omelet. I could definitely I can go for this right now. Oh yeah, yeah, the all American. I think I think that's yeah, what's called. I could definitely but, uh, I could do that. Yeah, man. Uh, breakfast any time of the day, man. Like two o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning to like three o'clock in the afternoon it doesn't yeah. matter <laughs> definitely i could definitely do that too um what's like one of the hardest lessons you've had to learn in the business 
Um, it's it's a tie between. Uh, I I really had to learn. Um, I uh, I suffer from uh, something known as uh, a punchable face. <laughs> and I've been told that many times by many people. And it's great. At, like when you're a heel, it's great because that just means it's very easy for me to get people to hate me. But I think that it hurts me in uh, in real life because I think people will see me and be like, this guy is a douchebag. <laughs> And, and sometimes like I'll be listening to people I've gotten in trouble at, uh, seminars. And when I was younger, I would get in trouble at seminars or even, um, you know, before a show when like, they're trying to get everybody together make sure everybody's on the same page on like what the lay of the card, you know, laying the car out, card out. I've gotten in trouble by people just looking at me and being like, what is your problem? Like, why do you have that look on your face? And I'm like, I, I was just listening. They're like, no, what's that? why do you have that like goofy ass grin on your face? I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm just standing here trying to listen. And they're like, I would, I would just get like, uh, ripped into just because of like my face. Uh, so I really had to learn to like, and then it never helped because when they started to, when they would start to get on me, I would always like, I would smirk more because I was like, when I'd get uncomfortable, I'm always like, <laughs> Yeah, no, everything's cool, guys. There's nothing serious going on. And they're just like, why are you smiling? This is serious. Why are you smiling? I'm like, oh. so I had to learn to just like blank face everything whenever like somebody starts to get on to me about something. And uh, the other thing was um, uh, my aggression. Um, when I first got into wrestling, uh, my aggression was like the hardest thing to tap into. And um, my trainer down in Texas, like just put me in a normal drill and just was like, all right, we're just going to, just going to beat on you and you're going to have to like beat back, but like, you need to be aggressive. And, uh, that helped me out a lot. Um, cause I definitely think I would not have lasted as long if I didn't find the, uh, find that aggression. I think aggression is very important for wrestling, regardless of what kind of character you have. But, um, yeah. Yeah, my face has gotten me in so much trouble. And I and it's like people have complimented me, like, man, you have a punchable face. Like, that's a good thing. But then I think about all the times it's gotten me in trouble. I'm like, man, it's too much like here's a win here and here's like a loss here. You gotta learn to balance that out, man. <laughs> I uh okay, so I can't I can't attest to the punchable face thing. I could definitely kind of like talk about like the aggression side. I feel like that's something like I hear a lot now, right? And I mean, I've only been it for like two years, but I hear it all the time. Like, dude, you just died. You just went out there and you, as soon as he punched you, like you oh, yeah. went to the ground and you just didn't get back up. Like you weren't selling like you're supposed to. Right. And recently I've been finally getting better, but that's because when I'm in training, I, we're always running like heat drills mm -hmm. and I'm always, and I'm always being the one that's getting taken down. Right. So that way I can always work on getting back up, at least mm -hmm. throwing like a shot, you know, just fighting back because obviously like as a baby face, like who's going to cheer for you? If you're just, I get punched, I just drop to the ground. I just lay there <laughs> and don't yeah. get back up. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, that's something that I always stress with like a lot of the new guys at training. Um, when I get to training at the monster factory, uh, I try to help out a lot of the new guys with a lot of the basics. So one of the things I always stress when they start to do stuff is, you know, I'm like, once you learn it now, like, you know, start putting some meaning behind it. Don't just lock up. Don't just do these moves just to do them. Like once you get it down, do like now that you have it down as like a uh, second nature and you just do it, you know, if someone says grab a headlock and you can, you can just grab a headlock. Now you need to start working on like putting emotion behind it and like putting a, you know, making me believe that you're in a fight not just being like, I have a headlock now, I, you know, things like that. So um, here's, yeah. here's my wrist lock. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And I, have <laughs> I definitely, I understand. Yeah. The whole, the whole staying alive show and fight is real important. And, and I mean, we like, we've all been there, 
you know, everybody, I think everybody just starts dying too quickly when they're first learning. And then it's just like trying to figure out, you know, okay, this is only, if this was a match, this has only been like two minutes. I shouldn't be completely dead unless I just have no gas, you know, if I have no stamina whatsoever. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. I shouldn't just be laying on the ground unless I completely got mauled by a guy twice my size and maybe I can lay on the ground a little bit, but yeah. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I love, I love the aspect of like, it was something, it was something somebody brought to me and I'm going to ask you about like what kind of advice you would give, but it was like an advice that someone gave to me off of Facebook and they got it from somebody in a seminar and they were like, if I told you that you were getting paid a million dollars to win this fight, right, to win this match, I bet you would structure this match a lot different than what you do normally. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I definitely, I was like, you would have told me $10. <laughs> I'm fighting a lot different than a million. I was like, we are doing this. And uh, I remember uh, my friends, when I when we talked about it, like in our own chat group, they're like, oh, yeah, I think I would. I was like, listen, I'm knocking both you guys out. I don't give a shit. I'm trying to win money now. That's a whole different aspect of this fight. And I think about it now, I'm like, all right, that's how I'm going to establish myself now going into all and I, I was even watching my matches back i'm like if there was a million dollars would you really just sit there in the corner and just wait for your spot or would you just go through and just kick the shit at people and i was like mm. definitely think i would go through and kick the shit at people <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh it's interesting uh you know i've uh had a, a few different trainers and like just thinking about all the different uh, all the different things that they've done differently, but then all the things they do that have been the same and just, they just approached it like, or they approached it or explained it differently, but it was all like the same thing. They're still trying to get the same point across. This is really interesting. Um, you know, how they'll like analogies that people use basically, like when they are trying to, when they're trying to sell you on something and, and like prove a point to you to like make it click, it's always like the analogies that they'll use. I, what I love is, um, my trainer down in Texas and it still happens. And I always think about him every time is he would be like, he would tell me and uh, the other guys that were training, he's like, look, I'm going to tell you something over and over. I don't know how many times. And you're going to be like, Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. And then you're just going to go to a seminar. Just, it might be a name. It might be somebody from somebody else from Texas that you've looked up to, but they're going to say something. And you're going to be like, it all makes sense. And he's like, and if you look at me, I'm going to look at you like, sounds familiar. And, and I always, I always remembered him saying that. So anytime I was at a seminar and somebody said something that I, that I knew he had said, and, if, and cause sometimes he would, uh, he would hold seminars at his, at his facility. So he would still be there. He, the, the trainer would say something. I just look over at him and he'd just be like, because I know I was like, oh, he said that. So I better look over at him. So I always I always in my head, I'm always like, if I hear something he said before, I'm always in my head. I'm just imagining looking over at him and him just going. Told you so. I told you so. Um, and, and like I, I've done that to uh, I've done that to a couple guys before uh, that I've helped out at the, the Monster Factory where I'm just like, eh, that sounds familiar, right? What that guy just said, that sounded kind of familiar. <laughs> I like it. Uh, what kind of advice would you give to up and coming wrestlers? Uh, you know, um, I guess most importantly is, um, you know, do, uh, do your research, uh, stop by facilities, you know, most, most places let you stop by to like watch a training you know, kind of get a vibe for, for what you're stepping into. Um, everybody trains and teaches differently. Um, you know, look at track records, things like that. And, uh, you know, don't be afraid to, if it's something you really want to do, uh, don't be afraid to pick up and move. Uh, if it's within your means, obviously, I mean, if you're limited to that, then like try to find something, within your driving, you know, whatever you're willing to drive to. But uh, if you find some school that you really want to go to and it's too far, I mean, if, if it's something that you can like move for, maybe not right now, but 
but you can always do it later. Um, I ended up going to uh, Lance Storm School because that was something I always wanted to do. And I didn't do that till a couple, like a few years later. And, uh, you know, um, that was like a three month investment in another country. But uh, I made it work and uh, I don't regret it. So, um, but yeah. Uh, and then just uh, work out. Like, <laughs> get get some basic get some basic basic fitness because you got to be able to hold people you got to be able to protect people you got to be able to control your body and if if you've never stepped into a gym it's going to be very difficult early on so i mean yeah don't 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 just give up if it starts to get hard i mean this is something that you want it's going to be hard. There's going to be days where you're, you're going to be tired and you don't want to do this, but you got to remember, like, if this is something you want to do, there's, there's, you gotta, you gotta like, you gotta wade through, you gotta wade through the bad times to get to the good times. So, yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, I mean, that's a few things, but <laughs> it's all great things to know though. Like I know, I know myself personally, like I went, uh, I was like three months into training and I got hit. We, we got hit with COVID and like everything got shut down. Oh, so like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Two years ago. Yeah. That's, that's okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I was yeah. like, I was like, maybe this is a sign that I should stop because maybe this is like a bad idea. And then like, oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. And then I could see how I, that mentality could hit for sure. I am trying to think because I had that happen and then everything kind of opened back up late May. So I was like, all right, let's get into, let's get to doing this. Mm -hmm. and then uh i'm getting ready to debut at my first show right and i tear my abdomen <laughs> like right the week before my debut i tear my abdomen out six weeks i was like maybe that's a sign right that i should stop oh, you know, I, was like, I was like you know what i can't do it i was like i gotta keep i gotta see this through right so yeah. i finally, I finally made my debut and everything and yeah, since then, like, there was a, an incident that happened, like, the following May of 2021, and I was like, maybe that's the sign? I was like, I'm just going to keep going and see how far we can go with this thing. <laughs> that, that, that brings up another, that brings up another thing. It's like, stuff might happen early on, like an injury that sets you back, and, like, it can be very frustrating, um, but especially like um like when you start off when you start training and there's somebody else new that starts with you like that's awesome like so i want to let people know like if you start off and there's someone new who's starting off like around the same time as you if not the exact same time as you like that's liter literally that should be your new best friend in wrestling because yes. when we came back uh, over at the monster factory we had a whole new slew of of uh trainees and like i saw these guys like bond and it's just like oh man we're, we're all starting together like let's like let's all help each other let's i mean i think they were getting together and doing uh tape watch together I, i'm pretty sure they were probably like practicing lockups and everything like that and like that's good like when you the more you can do outside of training as long, you know, safely, you know, the simple stuff like footwork and, and things like a lockup, like that's so much easy to get those reps in with somebody that you start with is good, but like, don't, don't let a setback, like a small injury that makes you sit out. Don't, don't make it, don't feel like, Oh, I'm falling behind. Everybody's getting far. Like everybody's getting ahead of me. Cause I'm not doing anything like, nah, man, like we all progress differently. If you're, if you're injured, like this is your time to like watch, learn from their mistakes now. So when you get back in there, you don't do those exact same mistakes that you've already seen them get in trouble for. Like injuries can be such a blessing for, for a new person. Uh, just in the sense of like, if you're not the type of person who likes getting yelled at for doing something wrong, if you just sit and watch, you can, you can avoid making so many mistakes 
just by watching what the mistakes that other people do. I, I, I say that as like a younger sibling and I didn't make near as many mistakes as my, my brother and sister did because I watched them make mistakes and I went, all right, mom didn't like that. I will not do that. Cause I, <laughs> uh, I don't want to get beat over the head. So, you know, um, it, it's, but like, definitely if somebody starts or somebody's just as new as you are, like they should definitely be, they should definitely be one of your new friends because it's going to, it's so much better when you have somebody that is coming up with you that you can like go on that journey with together. And I see that I, I didn't have that. I just, I had people that I trained with, but there was people who were like already ahead of me. So yeah. I was always just trying to catch up. Um, but like, I look at these guys that have like come up together and I'm just like, man, that's gotta be so cool. Cause you already got it right. You're when you're ready to start doing shows, you already have somebody to like, you already have somebody to jump in the car with you. Cause you, you are all good. You're all going to want to work on shows. So you're going to try and get booked on shows together. Uh, if not, you're gonna be like, Hey man, you want to ride with me? I'm going to like, you have those buddies where it's just like, you don't even have to ask. They're probably just gonna be like, Hey, you want to get in the car? Cause you're, you know, it's like, Hey, I'm, I got this show. You should come meet the, you should come meet the person. You know, that's one thing I feel like that I, I missed out on. And I feel like I didn't, I didn't ask. That was my yeah. biggest problem is I never asked. Um, I, I, I never looked at the guys that once I was ready to have shows, I didn't look at the guys and be like, Hey, can I come with you to that show? Or like, Hey, I know you're going to Houston. Like, can I, can I ride with you? Like, I did not do that until somebody was like, why don't you hop in a car with somebody? I'm like, Oh, okay. And I still don't do that enough now. I still don't do that enough now. Like I can honestly say, I, I, I don't do that as much as I should now. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it's such an important thing. It's so it's so much better if you have somebody you come up with together. Yeah, I got fortunate because like, uh, so I worked in the dark world of wrestling. We don't talk about you know the backyard, <laughs> and uh, so I was in there. And one of my friends was um, he was also talking about wanting to go pro, and so I started in January. He actually started in March, and then the shutdown happened. But we both had this podcast, right? Like this single podcast right here. And uh, so we were able to like talk and vibe and then we um, started up the show. And then when we got back into training, like it was just easy for us. We just clicked and we just went off. And so, yeah, I've had that person, which is kind of cool that to, when someone else validates, like that's what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely, I'm definitely grateful. Um, you've been in a lot of different locker rooms. You've been in a lot of different areas, man. So I got to ask this question. I need one do and one don't of the locker room. One do, one don't. Uh, don't, uh, don't interrupt, uh, people talking, uh, you know, like, a lot of people, you know, especially when you're just starting, it's like, oh, I got to go around and like introduce myself to everybody, you know, and it's like if there's some people talking and they are like engaged, like focused or if they're like huddled up, like you can just go by and like do a wave or like maybe like reach out and just say, hey, but uh, I I've gotten some looks from like disrupting the conversation that was going on and it's just like yeah okay and it's like oh i should have waited i should have waited it's like i can get i can get them later like you can always get them on the next go around like you can always look and be like okay i'll come back and then be like oh hey hey just you know real quick um it's something simple i guess but uh one do um I mean, oh man, if, if you don't have a long drive, if you don't have like a long drive ahead of you, especially if you're like, this is more for like newer people, I guess. If you don't have like a long drive, as soon as the show's over, 
ask if you ask if you can help out you know see if there's anything that you they need that you can help out with you know they might have enough uh they might have have enough staff or they might have enough trainees that are there helping out and and you don't need to do anything but it's so much better to just be like hey is there anything i can help out with before i head out like i just want to you know if i can make this a little easier for everybody you know i can grab a couple chairs we need to fold up some chairs or whatever um i feel like that just shows like i don't know you're it, it's i don't know i guess it shows that you care you know you're not just like hey i'm here and hey i'm out like it's it's like oh time's up i'm heading out like obviously if you got like a a trip um i remember we would have some shows down in san antonio and that's like a five-hour drive from uh from Dallas, you know, show ends at like 10, you know, everything's starting to wrap up. Like fans are leaving and now it's like, everybody can start wrapping up. It's like 10 30. I mean, like I would like me and the person I'd ride with or, or rode with me, we would like hang around and we're just like, how can we help out? And then finally somebody was like, don't you have like a five hour drive? Like, Hey man, I appreciate it. But like, get on the road, dude. You don't want to get home at like 3 a.m. I'm like, oh, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> cool. I don't have to wait. I don't have to like get home at like four or five. All right, cool, cool, cool. Let me, <laughs> let me head on out then. I appreciate it. But like, you know, I still stuck around to help until someone was like, hey man, we're good. Don't worry about it. You know? Um, so I guess, I mean, those are just simple new things when you're first getting in the locker rooms, I guess that that's like good to do. I was very old school, but that's just, uh that's just how my trainer back in texas was like very mm -hmm. old school mentality so no i like that though that's that's cool though but those are my heavy hitting questions so we got to get into the second best segment of the three count podcast and you're probably wondering what's the first it's the red dogs power rankings that you can find every sunday on our debate show but this is the three count podcast 10 count questions and uh mr classy this is how it's gonna work I'm going to fire off 10 questions at you and uh, whatever's your answer. That's your answer. Okay. All right. I will try to be, I will try to be uh, quick and rapid fire. <laughs> All right. So we're going to put on an imaginative timer for added pressure. Bing. And here we go. Smackdown or raw Smackdown favorite movie. Uh, Hot fuzz. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Sonic or Mario. Mario. Favorite cartoon. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Let's go. Like the 90s one or like the current one? Uh, I like old school, man. You know, OG. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yep, yep. I'm, all, I'm on board. Uh, PlayStation or Xbox? Boy, uh, I'm going to have to go... I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to go Xbox because you didn't say which which generation. So I'm just trying to take into the account those OGs, man. <laughs> I got you. Uh, favorite actor? Uh, Tom Hanks. Okay, I like Old it. School. I, like well, it. I like the I like the older the older actors that have put in some work. Okay, so the jive or the swing? Swing, man. <laughs> favorite podcast podcast uh you know i really like uh this american life um they kind of cover different stories um but it's just uh some of them will be very interesting and some of them will be like very informative um i think one of the most recent ones that i listened to i'm a little behind but they did one on a a guy who uh, got pulled into like the NFT world, and like just talked a little bit about that that dude's this dude got pulled into NFT world in a very crazy way, and he ended up making a lot of money from it. But then you know they they were talking to him. He's like, yeah, no, I don't really like NFTs, but I'm just kind of in this world now. He's like, I don't think most of them are worth anything. I like, guess it's very interesting to like hear how he got pulled into it his experience with it and then like where he is today with it, where he's just like, yeah, man, I don't know. Most people really shouldn't get into him, but 
I mean, I'm just kind of, I've, I've been pulled in and he got, he's like very deep in it now. It's kind of unavoidable because he had, um, he created something like in 2016 that was kind of an NFT before that was even a thing. And then um, somebody told him, hey, if you bring this back, you can make a lot of money with it. And he was like, what do you mean? And he ended up making a lot of money from it because people were like, oh, we got to buy these. These are these are valuable because it's so old school. But uh, it was very interesting. It was, it, but it random, but it was interesting. And they have a lot of other stuff that they'll do. Like some like, uh, you know, some of them are just like, eh, OK, I don't know if this one's for me, but a lot of them are just very interesting. So I really like this American life. Cool. Definitely with Ira Glass. Gonna have to put that. Uh, gonna have to put that on the list of things to check out. Uh, nominate one person that you want to see on this podcast. Uh, Getty Cahoon. That's that's my boy. So <laughs> I would have to say Getty Cahoon just just because I want to see him on a I want to see him on a podcast trying to uh, answer some of these questions. <laughs> <laughs> and then last but not least, my favorite question asked every single person who comes on this show, favorite curse word. Um, uh, man, you know, it's, uh, it's not very classy to, to, to curse. So, uh, but when I do, <laughs> When I do, um, I don't know, man. It's not it's not horrible. It's not like a super bad one, but it just feels nice to say when you can like find a nice nice spot to say it. But uh but bullshit, you know? Like if if there's a really good time where you can just like this is bullshit, that's bullshit, you're bullshit, like whatever. If you find a really <laughs> good use for it, it's just like simple, easy, nothing crazy, you know. But for me feels good I, i'm gonna be honest man like i've been watching the uh the johnny depp amber heard trial and uh yeah i find myself saying that all the time like that's <laughs> bullshit I'm like bullshit <laughs> like it just like questions things yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it is definitely a word that you can use kind of like for whatever emotion you're looking for mm -hmm. <laughs> I definitely appreciate it good when you can't just fit it in like good bullshit. It's definitely yeah. really good. <laughs> yeah. gotta, gotta be a good spot where it yeah. feels real good. Well, those are all my heavy hitting questions that I do have for you. So if you can let our listeners and our viewers know where they can find you. Uh, my social media is classy wrestler. Uh, I've been told that I should change it to my actual name. I'll probably do that at some point, but as of right now, Instagram, Twitter, um, classy wrestler. Uh, I'm not very active on Twitter. I'm trying. I'm trying, man. It's so hard. Like I get on there and I just look for what my friends are saying. And then I might respond to some of that or I'll like retweet some stuff. But Twitter is just, it's, it's, it can be hard to keep up with, but like, that's the point. That's why you have to be good on Twitter is because that's like, that's the big one. That's where everybody goes to. So, yeah. But a uh, classy wrestler. All the time, my friends all tell me too. They're like, dude, you gotta be on Twitter. You gotta be more active on Twitter. I was like, do you know how hard it is to be on Twitter? It's equivalent to telling people to stop smoking. That's how hard it is to be. Here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, yo, it is insane. You're so right. But you know what this is. That means that like every great part of a wrestling match. We got to take it home because this is the three count yeah. podcast presents now entering and I'm your host Clifford Red Dublin, a man that leads you up this mountain called wrestling. But like a good Sherpa, which I like to think I am, you got to have someone who's been there, done that and can do it more efficiently than you can. And that's why it's never about me. It's about who's entering the ring. And you see him right next to me, the classy Max Sterling himself. So you guys know what to do. Tune into the next episode and be there or you just wait for this episode to end. You wait for that outro. And then you choose another episode to listen to. Peace. What's going on, Three Count Nation? I'm Clifford Red Dog Miller with the catchphrase.
But what I really want you to do right now, go to twitter.com, right? Go over there, find us at the three count underscore pod, give us a follow, give us a like, give us a comment. We want to talk to you guys. Go to IG at the three count pod. Give us a like, give us a follow, leave us a comment. We want to interact with you. Go to youtube.com, give subscribe, turn the bell on, turn on notifications, leave a comment. We want to talk to you. Go to anger.fm forward slash the three count podcast and in there you can leave us a message and we will talk to you. Basically what I'm trying to tell you is that we want to talk to you. We want to have fun with you guys and we love listening to what you guys have to say. Also one thing I need you to do for me, the three count podcast also has merchandise. At ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash the three count pod. Please go buy our t-shirts. We love you guys and we hope you love us too. So show us some support, please.